Well, I feel like I'm used to working with Model Ts and I just wired up a spaceship. I max out at about 14 pull-ups, so I'm very lightweight, but that's helpful when it comes to installing a span panel because this baby's 75 pounds. You can see there's a lot going on in here. In previous videos, I showed you, I unboxed it, uh, explained some of the, the mechanical characteristics, some of the performance dynamics. I'll be telling you more about that. We've got the old panel out, powers off to the house right now. The brand new Tesla solar roof is out back with Tesla Powerwall, Powerwall Plus. Um, there's a lot of equipment in that garage. Check on the video here if you're interested about that. You want to be more delicate with this, don't you? Well, for other panels with less electronics. All right. So far, so, so good. It'll be a little challenging to do this on your own. A little bit. It's only 75 pounds, and those are 18 gauge communications conductors. I wouldn't worry about it. All right, my fingers kind of... My fingers are in the way. There it is. Put a box wrench on those things if I need to. All right, keep coming up if you can. I think that's it. Bottom holes lined up, the mounting block. Sweet. There are drill outs in the side of this band and they're marked black here, but they're a little hard to get to and I'm gonna, I spaced it off the drywall wall behind us by installing some two by six mounting blocks. I trap my tool belt. So this band is indoor and outdoor rated 32 space 64 circuit. Compatible with Square D, Eaton, Siemens. Every circuit is individually monitored and controlled. It's, uh, it's really a beautiful piece. This is a sub panel, so neutrals and grounds are separated. I've removed the bonding strap between the ground bar and the neutral terminals. I do like the fact that you've got neutrals all down the side. Um, it's, it's pretty slick. Let's get these. Terminals opened up. For reference, that's a 3 8 Allen Square D apparatus. Currently, it's a 200 amp breaker, but you can get any Square D 100 to 200 amp breaker. Square D home line. It's Square D QO that had the massive recall. Whew. We don't put those things in, but that's a that's a big job. Keep your metal shavings out of the span panel. All right. <clears throat> it's a Klein Tools four-way stripper, four out, two out, two fifty, three out. <laughs> mm, it's a hazard of the job. So we've got four out aluminum here. So you push it onto the desired strip length, and then I'm actually not real skilled at using this one. So let's see if I've got the touch. Okay. So no exposed blades, which is nice. Minimize the risk of getting cut. But I did jam my... <laughs> There's gotta be a trick to that. I'm gonna ask Cliff, this is his tool. My insulation is jammed in there. Let me just try jamming it on another one, see if it works itself out. All right, we gotta no locks these babies up. Anti-oxidation compound. The inspectors will fail. It's, it's not gonna hurt anything, even on aluminum alloy and the inspectors are gonna fail it if you don't, if they don't see an ample amount of anti-oxidation compound. And then this brush actually comes from the plumbing department, but man, it's so quick, cheap and efficient. You can buy these things for seven, eight, 12 bucks. Get a good wire brush on there, boom. I see why they tighten them down all the way because in um, <clears throat> transit, those things will rattle free and you'll have a cabinet full of small parts. Um, but it is a little disappointing to have to go through and open them all up. I'll use just about every single one of them. So approved main breakers for span are the QOM 2200VH. This is rated for 22,000 
amps of interrupting current. So it's pretty robust. 10,000 is generally the, the residential floor. 22,000 is pretty good. We were looking for the torque specifications for the main ground and neutral lug. And on the breaker for these L1, L2, it's posted on the breaker itself, as you could expect. However, all the torque specifications are inside the main door of the span panel. Took just a minute to find them, but it's 250 inch pounds for all of these. So it's time to set my torque wrench and crank it down. I might have told you in a previous video, maximum breaker size, 90 amps. We had 100, um, and so I was required 100 amp sub panel, so I was required to downsize that. Interestingly enough, <coughs> there's so many nuances here. There are main feed through lugs at the bottom. Those are rated 200 amps, but the breaker capacity, 90 amps max. Um, if you're locating photovoltaic output in this panel or Tesla Powerwall, there are specified locations. See there are these little instruction stickers in here. See install manual, breaker positions 29 to 32 may be reserved for hybrid inverter for proper function. So some, some cool things, some communications up here. We're in this case connecting one ethernet pre-made, shielded, 300 volt rated. Ooh, feels pretty tight. There it is. Um, RJ45, connecting it in there. Wanna make sure your conductors are fully seated, wire brushed, no locks, and then go slow. Your torque wrench, wrench could be out of calibration. Last thing you wanna do is shear this off, be running to the supply house for a $200 breaker that may not be in stock especially right now, shoot. Constant challenge, supply issues. Constantly running up the cost of jobs. There it is, that's what we were looking for. Squirty Homeline Eaton BR Siemens QP. And I forgot to tell you, I don't know who has them anymore, but Murray QP are all approved breaker types in the span panel. As well as tandems, triplex, and quadruplex breakers. Here's one thing about any load connected to those feed through lugs, it's not monitored. And uh, there's a 100 amp sub panel in the Airbnb down here in the basement. It's going to be monitored as a whole. So there will be no granular insights coming from that panel. It's going to be a singular load in the eyes of the span panel on that, in my case, 80 amp breaker. There it is. Here's another nice thing. The span bus bar is rated to 225 amps, which gives you more headroom for photovoltaic input. With a 200 amp breaker, you've got 70, off the top of my head, I think it's 70 amps of headroom. So that's like a Tesla Powerwall and a 7.6 kilowatt inverter, which is kind of industry standard. That's the average residential size. Easy. Ooh, that's as, that's as far as I go on that one. All right, wiggle tight and loosen tight. That just helps those individual strands. Ooh, it's gotta be a seat in there. You can get larger energy storage systems and larger photovoltaic output. Um, for instance, with the Tesla system, you've got a Tesla gateway. There it is. You've got a Tesla gateway, and that's got a bus bar inside of it that you can use to land your inverter outputs. And so you could land some there, some here, and you could get a larger residential system. I think Span had one house, East Coast, I think, that has nine of these babies in it. That's that's real money. That's that's silly money right there. Span is made for a 16 on center mounting. It's exactly 14 and a quarter wide. So convenient that they're complying with industry standard there. Order of operations. Get your big cables in first or you'll never get them around all your branch circuits once those are in. So big cables first and then I like to get my conductors in, starting at the back, working my way forward. I'm loosening up my Romex connectors substantially. 
so I'm not, they're not fighting me. And I'm gonna tighten them down because I want a nice bond to the cabinet. Um, and you can really do that easily with a pair of pliers. I'm working it and getting my lock nut on tightly on the bottom. And then I finish it off with a quarter turn on the pliers and boom, it's nice and straight. I can't put all my Romex connectors in or I won't be able to get to the screws. So start at the back, work way forward. <clears throat> so Span provides that fillable PDF. That's really nice. Guys, love you for that. Thank you. All right. We're just working away the most tedious part of the job. And that's starting to lace our cables back into the box. So it looks like chaos, but it's controlled chaos. And we're going to get this moderately beautified. That's next. Span is a slightly difficult retrofit. A little bit more than a regular panel. But heck, I've got, it's not that much more. And I do have years of experience, decades, on a regular panel. So I'm going to give it some grace. But there's no ground bar on the left side for when your grounds and neutrals are separated. So your conductors have to cross all the way over. And there's no ground bar that I'm aware of, right, Cliff? On the bottom. So if you've got circuits coming up, they're gonna be too short. You're gonna have to junction them. In some jurisdictions, that's gonna be a big no-no. Um, the code is a little bit ambiguous, I would argue. Pull on the white. Ah, there it is. Uh, and big. Pull it up. Uh-huh. There. The code says, oh, and the ground, I'm missing the ground. Uh, that junctions shall not be made in electrical equipment unless, and I think it says there is sufficient room and it is intended, yep, it is intended for that purpose or approved by the manufacturer, something like that. And so, that's good. I will go ahead and pull the outer jacket up and secure it there. So you tell me, ultimately, if the, inspe Oop. if the inspector says yes, and he knows what he's talking about, you're good. Tedious. No, a word comes to mind. Oh, it's tedious. Hold itself. Man, the worst, one of the worst mistakes you can make is just tedious. And the apprentices. <laughs> that I trained, they're like, you talk about this all the time. I'm like, this because it's so dang frustrating. <laughs> but when you over tighten a Romex connector and you, especially if you're using a power tool on a Romex connector, not at Jefferson, and you, you, you compress and internally short circuit the, the cable, you're like, why is this breaker tripping? What's going on? I can't find the fault. And then when you loosen the connection, you pull that wire out, sometimes you can't even see it. It's completely internal. And the outer jacket, it's not even been damaged. Sometimes you can see a, a subtle blackening of the jacket, but sometimes you can't. And then you slice that thing open because you're desperate, you're like, you've looked everywhere, and you find it and you're like, there it is. You can't just bundle the heck out of stuff. You've gotta have multi-conductor cables exposed to free air or any kind of wiring. You've got, you've got what's called D-rates. So it's complicated not getting into it here, but the bottom line is um, I'm gonna consider that exposed to free air because nothing's so tight. You can see there's there's a lot of give in that bundle. This one's a little tighter, but it's also pretty brief and there's free air all around. It's not inside of a two inch PVC pipe. That gets pretty restraining. All right, so we've got the L1, L2 uh, lug protectors on here. We're gonna land all the breakers. We're utilizing all 32 spaces so the bus will be protected. We're then gonna go ahead and turn on the breaker in the garage, turn this on and start bringing circuits back up um, so that we're going to make an effort to minimize the downtime. However, what I don't know is prior to commissioning the span panel, which, you know, it might do that first thing when we bring the power up. Prior to commissioning the span panel, will, the, will these circuits automatically come live, will this behave like a standard electrical panel? Or what? It's the or what that has me worried. Thank you. It's a real nice fit. Doesn't have any trouble rocking in there. Happy to see that. I mean, the, the feeling you get with Span is quality. There's no question about it. It feels real nice. You work with some equipment and you're like, ooh, that doesn't feel good. Um, so this is not disappointing. Guys, 
it worked. I tried to use my camera to scan that QR code and it didn't work. And I remembered, oh yeah, in the install installer app, there's this thing. So boom, now we're rocking. Use the installer app, the span installer app to scan the QR code. It's not that complicated, Joel, come on. Technology. Okay, we're here in the garage with the beautiful Tesla setup. And I'm ready to throw the breaker, get power back onto the house. Cliff is expecting it, hands are clear. Uneventful. Good. Uh, wall connectors are coming back live. Two of them out here. It's an electric family. 242. There it is. Yeah, 14. 121. Okay. Uh, let's check. We got it. Last thing we want to do is not have a neutral for some reason or be missing a leg. Sometimes when breakers are set, one of the legs doesn't connect. Usually it's it's faulty breakers, older breakers, but you never know. Here it goes. Look away. No, oh, that's gorgeous. Fans are running. Span has this little section, what to expect when you turn power on. I mean, that is kind of nice to have a light. <laughs> it's very nice to have a light in your panel. This is our pre-made RJ45, Cat5, 300 volt rated factory cable. And buy those factory cables when you can, it's just to reduce labor um, and margin for error with field connections. A lot of times you won't end up with interference if the communications cables and the power conductors are just crossing. What you don't want is them running parallel for any significant distance. The shielded, because of that metallic shielding is going to be more forgiving um, than an unshielded cable. Cliff is on the move. Guys, so much going on here. Okay. Um, we're having trouble with the span commissioning. Totally not span's fault. We figured out what was going on. It turns out that we've got both the router and um, this Asus unit here and the router was off um, because it's plugged into an outlet down here that we didn't see behind the shelf um, so that was super basic but just took us five or ten minutes of banging around to find out what was going on there so circuits landed both outlets are energized and that's important because they're going to need to be identified in the span app as critical circuits or essential whatever they call them and that's going to keep power to those units which they are i mean we got water heater water softener sump pump and the, the internet system. So we wanna keep those running, come hell or high water. Uh, and then one thing I didn't anticipate is that there needs to be an ethernet cable between the Tesla system, specifically the inverter and the span panel. And it's a detached garage 30 feet from the house. So that's not happening today at uh, 5, 16 p.m. And putting Cliff out there on a 30 foot trench by hand. And so um, we're gonna see if we can connect through the home internet system. Get both these things talking to each other because they need to talk. So the app's pretty intuitive, super happy with it. And so now it's just a commissioning process, setup process of entering all of the labels as they appear on this fillable PDF, at, which is where they will live on the inside of the cover and how they appear in the app, getting the homeowner invited and Everything's squared away. So we are definitely longer than a regular panel. You have to charge more money. Have to, have to, have to. All right, this is a step in the process in the span commissioning. Label the breakers. So I've made pretty good progress. I'm down here now to my two pole breakers. That one is my dryer, clothes dryer. I'm making sure that the labeling matches exactly. Clothes dryer, it's already a standard two pole. It knows that input that is a 30 amp we've got some selections here is this an essential load is it a disable backup because it's too large when there's an outage or is it pause this load when current is above max rating of feeders i'm gonna let the customer make some of these selections um, but i will capture the um, the internet circuits so that doesn't slip by him. So for all my bragging about the fillable PDF and having it ready ahead of time, I gotta go change it. I've got a typo and I've got two that have been swapped 
and I've got a little bit more insight in that I couldn't read some of the writing on the panel cover, but I can on the actual labels on the wire. So I'm adjusting a few things, about four or five things. So I'm gonna be able to fill that out, send it to the customer as a PDF. They'll be able to print it, slide it in. We're close. I'm gonna run, run a panel test now. I've already set up my solar inverters, Powerwall plus solar assembly, my DC wattage. Ah, uh, okay. Come on, come on. See, there's not good Wi-Fi out to the garage. And I don't have a LAN out there because that was not part of the plan. Try it one more time. So we could extend the Wi-Fi signal out there or get a LAN connection, but. I will say one thing I like about Span is they're very well capitalized. And so they don't seem to be lacking in resources. I think they raised, I can't remember, tens of millions. How many tens? But um, it seems like the product is flowing freely. It's not but two or three weeks to obtain what you're looking for. Man. Panel's live, gotta be a little bit more careful now. It's just trying to get some of these more important circuits on, like the air conditioning, but I'm not worried about the dryer. Not worried at all. Couldn't dry your clothes outside right now though, it is too humid. I don't, I don't want any of that getting pinched. Let me put that cover on. It's a little bit crowded. So span, I'd really love to see ground terminal on this side and or the bottom. Having it all over here just gets a little bit busy. And then more ground terminals on the next version, por favor. More ground terminals. Okay, yeah, let's uh, let's add it back in. So I jump into the installer app and uh, add that back. I can do that real quick. Okay, yeah, we can do that. You okay. should be uh, able to get in there now. It's, right now it's only showing the span panel, uh, but uh, let's see how it does. Okay. Okay, hardware. Storage, Tesla, next. Batteries, one. I need to run out there. Oops. I need to run out there and scan it. Scan it, yep. Okay, Steve, it's all updated. Ah, uh, I ran the test and it says, please connect Tesla system as intended with ethernet cable, storage system communications error. I'm out by the Tesla system right now, not by the span panel like I was when you saw maybe some successful action. I don't know if the proximity of my phone matters at all. No, that shouldn't matter. 
Okay. Uh, all right. Let's see. So I've got my notes. For what changes, I'll make a comment. You definitely want a 3 16 and a 5 16 flathead for the installation of the span panel. You definitely want a torque screwdriver and wrench. It's interesting, I am seeing. Got him muted. You definitely want a 3 8 Allen's for your terminations. I saved all the hardware for the connection between grounds and neutrals in case this customer takes it with him uh, to a new home at some point. Average American lives in the average home, seven years. So relocate the span panel, maybe. So the hardware and bolts are left here in case this becomes a main service disconnect. Separation of grounds and neutrals, it is pretty crowded, but all in all, I love this thing. Really, really nice. Here's my most important thing I'm gonna say. Unless you're a professional, you should absolutely not undertake this. And you should use your own discretion. You're responsible for your actions. I did some things today that you may have noticed. You need to make your own, your own choices, right? So, man to man. Um, torquing down life circuits, things like that use your best judgment to keep yourself safe. And biggest lesson learned is we have to, have to, have to have a LAN connection between the span panel and the Tesla equipment on site. That can be accomplished at the Tesla inverter or the gateway. Um, I think there's a chance. If there's underground conduit all the way from where it exits the house here to the shop, to the garage, we're gonna be able to pull through that conduit. There is a SCR cable in there, so it's big. But we're gonna be able to pull an additional LAN shielded land through that conduit. It's going to be about 125 feet well, all in. To get two guys for it to go around two that. hours. Hey, well done. Still, yeah. So do you mind if I, just while I've got it running here, do you mind if I send an email to the customer? Nope, that's great. So you think the setup is more or less complete? I can do that. So what is your customer you know your customer's email address um i do it might take me just a minute to get there so you have uh just for clarity here uh on you did run an ethernet cable to span to correct span. yep okay that's it's kind of safe this year it's, it's uh looks like it's getting through that ethernet zero the And I got to hand it to you guys, Steve. If I could buy stock in Span, I would. And I told him when it becomes public, I want to be the first to know. Well, it's it's an exciting product. It really is. Yes, it is. And a, and a good group of people too. I, I really enjoy working here. I'm I'm actually remote, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm in Denver and. Of course, our HQ is in in San Francisco, but uh, I, everyone I've worked with has been really nice. That's great. Curiosity: How far is it between Anaheim and San Fran? Mm, that's a pretty good shot. Uh, Anaheim is down in LA, right? So it's probably five hundred miles or so. Woo, man! I'm from the Midwest. I underestimated that.
anything else. One thing that we do at Jefferson Electric, when, when we have frequent flyer projects like this, we put together a tote, a tote of standard tools and parts that's going to facilitate that every time because we do such a wide variety of jobs. If each individual electrician kind of has to dig through the truck and pull out the things for that particular task, it's time consuming to get those pulled out and put back. So I'm going to have a span, smart panel, installation tote. It's going to be fully assembled and it's going to have the little odds and ends that you're looking for. Because, um, man, if you don't remember a Square D Series A two inch hub and a two inch Romex connector. <clears throat> yep, sure I am, Steve. Okay, cool. Then you're Upper Creek without a paddle. And this, I didn't have this today, an eighth inch Allen. That's an odd connection. I don't know what the thought process there was. I'm going to ask Steve, actually. He may not know, but eighth inch Allen. So I can't torque those down. I had to do those by hand the old fashioned way, but I was able to torque everything else. I love the fact that Span integrates four larger terminals. I was able to use one of those today. Um, a lot of times neutral bars have one large terminal, maybe two, and then these smaller gauge conductors. But whenever you've got, I mean, the, the panel accepts up to 90 amp breakers. You're not landing 90 amp breakers here, right? You've got to um, get smart, smart as a panel manufacturer and Span definitely did that. So all in, it's a more difficult retrofit, but the revenues are there to justify it. I'm a hundred percent after my first install here, I'm learning some things, right? It's disappointing to be on with support, but I'm going to take all these lessons learned back to the team. Um, here's the deal. If every team member has got to learn the same lessons, the hard way, you're going to go broke. But if you can capitalize on every lesson learned, and share that with the team and it, we, we feed each other information um, we we save each other hard knocks here's the deal uh, a team member had made a mass mis massive mistake this is not a, our business massive mistake in a big company and uh, like a two hundred thousand dollar mistake so he walks into the ceo's office ceo sits down and says tell me what happened and the man lays out with intense clarity, <laughs> clarity that is felt and, and come about only through intense pain. And he lays out the situation, takes ownership and responsibility of exactly what happened. There's no blame, blaming, there's no finger pointing, it just cards on the table. And the CEO says, great, I appreciate that. Um, head back to your office, let's, uh, let's, let's stay, stick with it. And the guy's like, oh, I still have a job. <laughs> and the CEO says, I just invested $200,000 in your education. You think I'm going to let you go now? <laughs> you know what? That lesson needs to get to every corner of the company. Everybody needs to benefit. Everybody needs to see the light. Everybody. And so this, what I've learned today, my job, my, my biggest job at this point now is to take it into the company and to scatter that grass seed and, and just watch it take root and grow. And so every span installation gets better, faster. The tote, the PDF, um, fillable PDF, um, the, the site photos on the front hand, knowing exactly what to expect. Now, like you said, I've got another one of these coming up, so we're gonna learn together. Um, I've got a couple more nuggets to share with you. Don't go anywhere. Hey, Steve, out of curiosity, the ground terminals are, um, use a fastener type I've never seen before and it's a 1 8 inch Allen for the ground terminals which is unique from any of the other terminals in this panel and like I said I've never seen that in a panel before. Do you have any insights there? That's right. The, uh, the, ground, the ground bar? Yeah. Oh, it's not a square drive, it's actually uh, an Allen. It is an Allen, yep, good. You sound like you're pretty familiar with this kind of stuff. I am. I, I, I mean, it's typical. I see a lot where it'll be kind of a modified square uh, drive, so you'll have a slot and a square, in the, and a square drive in the middle. Right. No, like, that is unusual. I think you inquire about that. That's you, you need a unique uh, uh, screwdriver for that, really. Uh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, I need, to, I need to inquire about that. If this is a new, I mean, in some ways it's good. I, I, I don't know how many uh, straight slot uh, screws I've stripped out. 
Like, you know, the, yeah, I hate the straight I'm slots trying, for I'm sure. Trying to tighten them down. Uh, but yeah, that's unusual. Hmm. Oh. Knockouts, goofball. Talking and working at the same time, not my forte. Uh, yeah. Okay, you can do that on your end, huh? I sure can. Oh, that, that's customer service. Yeah. Whoa. So would he automatically get that when the job is done? Yeah, he'll get that. Uh, it'll come as a PDF. <laughs> you guys are beyond. Oh, my goodness. I love it. I had one printed, but you know how that goes. Things change. I had th uh, three changes. Um, but those will be ref those are reflected in what you have, so we're good. Yep. All right. It was very, very humid, extremely humid, nice and cool. I'm not gonna say cold. Very, just nice and cool. It's like having a MacBook, right? <laughs> you ever seen anybody do that with a PC? Oh, uh, like a Toshiba. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so I think it just snaps in there. I'm not, ooh, ooh, hmm, that's interesting. Ah, oh, there's a knockout there too. I didn't realize that. And that's if you reverse the door. That's why it's not, okay, check it, check it. So there are knockouts here, because this door is reversible, but obviously I like how it's hinged towards the, towards the walk door. <laughs> but there are knockouts on the side for the, latches. So let's see if I can gently, without risking anything. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Come on. Come to me. Come here. <laughs> okay, now that's tricky. It'd be nice if there was something, right, to hold on. My screwdriver's too big and it's a little, ah, a little too far in there. Anything I can do for you, Steve? No, yeah, I think I'm all clear. It's a matter of, uh, uh Mr. Uh, sorry, Watkins. It's a matter of, uh, he just accepted the invite, going in, setting up his uh, password. Mm -hmm. And, uh, from, uh, yeah, I think everything is looking great. Great. Uh, you know, ultimately, it, it We'll see how this runs, but ultimately it would be, it would be nice to have that hardwired run between the two devices. But I think uh, for now, everything is looking good. Well, I feel like I'm used to working with Model T's and I just wired up a spaceship. <clears throat> I'll be first to buy stock when they go public. Uh, it's pretty sweet. Subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.